I think it's fair to say that the past week has been quite a bumpy ride for the UK economy and UK homeowners and anyone looking to buy a house at the moment. Um, and what I wanna do in this video is really focus in on mortgages as there are two things in particular that I think are gonna completely finish off the UK housing market. So this chart in front of me, I think sums up really well what has happened with market sentiment over the past week. This is the market expectations for interest rates in the UK, the Bank of England interest rates. And you can see here at the start of the year, the markets were expecting the Bank of England interest rates to peak at less than 2%. Then in August, when it was clearer that things were going to be a bit messier than expected, they were still only expecting interest rates to hit below 3%. Then only a couple of weeks ago in mid-September, they are expecting below 5% and now are expecting 6%, which is a crazy increase compared to what people are used to paying. And I know there are going to be people watching this saying, oh, things were a lot worse in the 70s and 80s. And I'm going to come back to that later on in this video. So just bear with me until I get to that. So what does this actually mean in the real world? You know, what do these increases from 1.5% to 6% actually look like? Well, this is the Google Mortgage Calculator that I like to use. So let's run an example based on a £250,000 market. Let's say you've been borrowing at around about 2%, maybe a little bit above or a little bit less because you locked into a two or a three year or a five year fixed over the past few years. And at some point in the next few months, that is coming up for renewal and you need to find a new mortgage. So if we go to compare the market at the moment, the cheapest five-year fixed is at 4%. Now, I don't know how genuine that rate is because I've clicked through a number of these recently and the mortgages have often no longer been available. But if we come down, you've only got these guys at 4%, then 4.5% and then 5% where some of the big boys kind of come in. So let's just say this 4% rate is available and see what a difference that makes. So we go from £1,060 per month there to £1,320. So that's a £260 per month increase, which hopefully many households can actually absorb if they've got that type of income to be able to get the mortgage in the first place. But when you add that on top of what has already happened with your energy prices, so you're probably your energy direct debit has at least doubled over the past 12 months, plus general inflation running in double digits, things become very, very difficult. But let's say the interest rates do actually get to the 6% that they're expecting. And the chances are if the Bank of England's at 6%, the mortgage providers are gonna be even higher than this, but let's just run 6% anyway. And we're up to 1,611 pound. That is 550 pound more than they would have been used to pay. And so I think that alone, just the amount of money people can have to pay just because of interest, is gonna absolutely destroy the UK housing market for this cycle. On top of that, we have the swap rates. So on top of obviously market expectations, we're actually seeing this in real world data. So the swap rates are effectively how lenders get the money to lend to you. So when they lend you money, they rarely lend you their own money, they hedge that money from other people. So if they can borrow at 0%, as you can see here, the two year swap rate only a year or two ago was around 0%, and they can lend to you at 2%, they're making 2% on that money. But at the moment, the swap rate is up to 6%. So if they've got a hedge at 6% to lend to you, how much are they gonna be charging you? And this is comparable to what happened during the global financial crisis in 2008. So that is a big ringing alarm bell of what is to come. And I think the last week is gonna be seen as the catalyst that really kick-started the UK house price crash that we've been talking about for weeks. Now the foundations have been laid for months and months, but this is gonna be the event I think that people are gonna remember that really started to push things downhill fast. So that's the first thing, the actual cost of the monthly payments is gonna get so high that it's gonna be unaffordable for most, or not most, for many people to be able to continue with the mortgages that they currently have, so they may have to consider selling the house. Um, and I think here I've got some just additional examples from the BBC, so depending on whether you're borrowing 100K, 200K, 300K, 400K, then with interest rates go up to 4% or 6%, you get an example of how much extra you're gonna be paying per month and yeah that big amounts there's no way of sugarcoating interest rates going up are going to mean big big increases on the average mortgages in this country so going back to my earlier point about things not being as bad as they were back in the 70s and 80s uh, this is a tweet from ed conway from sky so if you're not following him on twitter well worth a follow he posts some pretty good stuff now i actually made a video on this subject a few weeks ago i think where is it here is the boomers had it easy about 17 percent interest rates and i'm sure all of you guys have experienced it people telling you the older generation telling you that things aren't as bad now with interest rates only a few percent compared to 15 16 17 percent back in the 70s but actually 
it's not as clear cut as just comparing the interest rates. It all comes down to affordability and that's what my video dived into. And that is what Ed is saying here. This is, I'm just gonna try to cherry pick the most important parts from this thread. Rising interest rates are a bigger deal than you might think. This is important. I'm a bit worried people are being way too complacent about rising interest rates. They assume that because they're so low now versus the 1990s, the 80s and the 70s, this will be a walk in the park. No. Now the conventional wisdom about this is that while a rise in rates might be tough for some households, it will be nothing like what we experienced in the 70s, 80s and 90s. After all, rates back then were in double digits and you can see you know, rates were a lot higher back in the 70s, 80s and 90s. However, in other words, the implication is that anyone who's worried about 4.75% or 6% interest rates is an utter snowflake. When I were a lad, interest rates were 15%. And I'm sure you guys have all experienced this at some point in your life. But here's the thing, interest rates are only one part of the picture because what's really relevant here is how affordable those interest rates are for mortgage holders. What matters is not just the rate, but how much you're borrowing and how equally important how high your disposable income is versus those payments. So what we've got here is a comparison chart. Let me see if I can make this bigger so you can see. And uh, it would be that I'm right in the way of that for a moment, but you guys get the idea that at the moment we're actually comparable to how bad things were back in the 70s. So with interest rates, I think it had, interest rates had to get to 3% roughly for things to be comparable now to what things were like in the 70s. So if someone tells you things aren't bad just because interest rates sound like they're low on paper, in terms of actual real world debt and affordability, things are as bad and they're gonna be worse than they were in the 70s, 80s and 90s. So don't let anyone tell you things are not bad. And on the subject of Twitter, if you're not following me on Twitter, you can follow me at Darren the DGen. And I actually made a post earlier this week, which a number of you guys liked, giving you an example of how mortgage rates are gonna crash the market and how much extra you need to earn to cover these increases. So for example, a nationwide five-year fix, a 250K mortgage over 25 years, at the start of the year would have only been 1.49%, which would have cost you 999 pounds per month. Now it's 5.19%, which is 1,489 pounds per month, which is a 490 pound per month increase. And to cover that, you would need to earn, if you're a 20% taxpayer, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, you're gonna to have to earn even more than this. A 20% taxpayer needs to earn 9,000 pound or more per year just to cover for this. Because obviously from that 9K, you're gonna lose 20% for your income tax and a chunk for national insurance as well. So that's how much of a difference you need to have with your salary to cover some of these increases. So the first part is your affordability, your monthly affordability, paying those bills is a big, big problem. The next thing I wanna focus on is this article here. These are two Bank of England researchers. They released this article a few years ago. And it contradicts what a lot of people think about the UK housing market. So a lot of people think that the UK housing market goes up so much because of supply and demand. But what this study found is actually, we find that the rise in real house prices since 2000 can be explained almost entirely by low interest rates. Increasing scarcity of housing evidenced by real rental prices and their expected growth has played a negligible role at the national level. So it's not demand, or obviously, obviously demand plays a part, but it's not demand that sin prices go up so much. It is the availability of cheap loans. So the availability of cheap, cheap mortgages allowed these prices to go up so much because if interest rates weren't this low, house prices would have never got this high regardless of how much demand there is. And that brings me on to the second point in this video is that with interest rates going up so much, banks aren't actually gonna lend in the first place. It's not a case of you not being able to afford the monthly payments. The banks aren't gonna lend on the same level as they have been lending. So if you've got a 500,000 pound house and all of a sudden people can't actually borrow the amount they need to buy a 500,000 pound house because they, can make, they might still be able to afford the monthly payment, but the bank may assess them differently and they can't get the multiplier they were used to getting. And if we run this through the calculator again, so if we go back to Google and put this on, instead of monthly cost, put it on maximum loan. Let's go back to this and put it on a 2% interest rate. Let's say your mortgage was gonna cost you a thousand pound per month and the interest rate was 2%. The bank may have lent you up to 235,000 pounds. So if you had maybe a 50,000 pound deposit, you can go and buy a house of 285,000 pound. If interest rates are at 4% and you can only afford a thousand pound per month, all of a sudden you can only borrow 189,000 pound. And if interest rates get to 6% and you still only wanna spend a thousand pound per month, you can only borrow 155,000 pounds. So if you can only borrow a lot less money, there's no way people can buy these more expensive houses. The house prices have to come down. Now people will argue that people don't have to sell, 
but you're gonna have, I think there's four things you've got to consider. You've got the three Ds, so you've got divorces, that always gonna happen, so people are gonna to have to sell the houses. Deaths, unfortunately, so people are gonna sell the houses, and the big one, oh, debt, people are gonna be in so much debt from obviously interest rates going up with inflation in double digits and the energy crisis, of course, so you've got those three things. But also, I think one of the things that's gonna see a glut of properties come to the market, and that is buy to let landlords. With mortgages going up so much, their profit margins are gonna be squeezed and squeezed. Plus there's lots of new regulations, so that's gonna be very expensive as well. And on top of that, I tweeted only last night, I think, if we come up here, the average rental yield in the UK is only 3.63%. There are fixed term savings account offering 4% plus without the hassle of being a landlord. So if you can make a higher return on your money without being a landlord, you might as well just sell the property because why would you want to hold on to an asset that is likely to decrease in price over the next couple of years when you can sell it and actually make a decent return by putting it into a decent savings account instead. So I think those four things together, we're going to see a big influx of properties onto the market. So that will throw out the supply demand equation. And if we know from this report that it's been the cheap debt all the time, the low interest rates that have driven the rise in house prices, if we're going to see a reverse of that, we know that debt is going to become more expensive. If interest rates are going, going to go up, then obviously my conclusion is that house prices are going to go into reverse to do the opposite of what they've done over the past 10 years. And the Bank of England have already pretty much confirmed that they're going to make a big hike on their 3rd of November meeting. They didn't want to make an emergency hike because they didn't want to seem panicked. Now, they may be able to squeak through till the 3rd of November, we shall see. But either way, everyone is now expecting quite a big hike on the 3rd of November and probably another big hike in December as well. So interest rates are definitely going up. Affordability is definitely getting worse. So I definitely think those two things together are going to completely finish off the housing market, unfortunately for many, many people in this country. So that's my take on the market at the moment. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you found this video useful, make sure you hit the like button. If you want to see more from me, subscribe to the channel. And what I'm going to do now is pop up a video showing you how you could potentially save hundreds of pounds through lost energy in your house with a device that only costs around £13. And I recommend you guys give that a watch.